The technique of crossfading becomes very, very important anytime you're joining one audio event directly next to a different audio event. And what can happen when you do that is that you get a little bump in between the playback of each segment. And I'm going to use this bass guitar track to show you that little bump. And the bass guitar will work really well because those little bumps usually show up as high frequency information. So let's start the playback from measure three and take a listen to these two audio segments that are joined directly at measure five. <laughs> Do you hear that little pop right at measure five? Let's play it again. It's more like a snap. And what's happening here is that when the transition is made between this audio event and the event directly to the right, is that the audio information doesn't quite join up between the two segments. I'm going to click and drag from the timeline and zoom in here so that you can really see what's going on. See what's happening is that this first audio event is somewhat quiet as it's going into measure five, but the next audio event has already started. In other words, I played a little bit ahead of the beat, and what's happening here is that this lack of uniformity between each of the audio events is creating that snap right at measure number five. So a crossfade is what we use to fix that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back out here a bit and I'm going to show you how to apply a crossfade. Essentially, you want to overlap the events. Now, there's already an overlap between these two events, but it's a little bit bigger than we'll need for a crossfade. If we were to use a crossfade of this size, which is almost an entire measure long, it would sound like like two different bass guitars are playing at the same time, and we don't want that. The region of the crossfade is going to be quite a bit shorter, so it's a matter of altering the overlap. So how do we do that? There's a couple of different ways to do it. You could certainly use the event handles on the right event to adjust the size of the crossfade back to the right, but what if you wanted to adjust the handle of the event that's on the left? Because it's actually going underneath the next event. You can tell from that pinstripe area that we've talked about earlier that that's where the overlap ends. So this is actually the ending point of that first audio event. So how do we adjust the handle on that? Because it doesn't have a handle like the event in the foreground has. So what you can do is if you click and select the left event and then go to the event boundary of the overlap, now you can click and drag that event underneath to the size that you want. Now this is best done when you have the snap turned off because this region that we're going to create as the crossfade area needs to be quite small. So you're going to want very fine control over the size of the event itself. So there's a couple of tricks. You can either turn off the snapping by typing J. In other words, that's this control up here that we've talked quite a bit about. If you turn the snapping off, then you can adjust that event to any size and, more importantly for crossfading, any overlap. But you can also leave snap on and while you're resizing the event that you want, you can hold down the command button and when you hold down the command button, it temporarily disables the snap. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to barely overlap those two audio events. Let's zoom in and get a finer degree of visualization here. You can see that I have a very short overlap between those two audio events. Now right now, if we were to play that back, we'd still hear that click. So what we want to do now is actually crossfade those two regions. And I'm going to zoom in a bit here, and then I'm going to show you the two ways to execute the crossfade. One way is to go under the audio pull-down menu and select crossfade. But you'll notice that very appropriately, the keyboard shortcut is X. And you know how I am about keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to leave my mouse hovering over that event so that we can leave the overlap exposed. And now when I type X on the keyboard, 
you can see that little crossfade. Essentially what's happening here is the first event fades out very quickly. At the same time, the other event fades in very quickly. And so what you end up with is a very short amount of time during which both audio files are playing. But because of that really fast fade in, that big bump, which creates the click, is now gone. Let's zoom out here and play back the results. Let's listen one more time. So whenever you're joining audio segments from end to end, it's a good idea to put a little crossfade in between the two segments so that you avoid those little snaps and pops and bumps in the audio signal. And now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make a slide edit.